Good morning, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. So I'd like to start today's program by welcome you, welcoming you all here today to the grand opening of our newest affordable housing apartment community, Finnamore Place. This is truly a momentous occasion for Jamboree, our partners, and most importantly, the community that we serve. My name is Laura Archuleta, and I have had the privilege of serving as Jamboree's president and CEO for 24 years now. I want to start off, we have some special elected folks here, and I'm going to go ahead and announce their names. Some of them are going to speak in a bit, but I'd like to go ahead and recognize them right now. These are the folks who are here today, they have courage to support housing for the full spectrum of this community, whether it be here at the local level, the county level, or at the state of California, or we have a representative here representing one of our um, nationally uh, elected officials also. So we're gonna start this off with Mayor Ashley Aiken. We've got... Assembly member and former Anaheim City Councilman, Avelina Valencia. From the City of Anaheim, Mayor Pro Tem, Natalie Rubakovla. We have from the City of Anaheim, Council Member Norma Campos Kurtz. And Supervisor from the County of Orange, Doug Chafee, District 4. Cassandra Perez, representing the office of Congressman Lou Correa. Newton Benacou, representing the office of Assemblymember Philip Chen. <coughs> Manuel S. Camilla, representing office of Supervisor Sarmiento, County of Orange, District 2. Dan Bartesh from the Office of Council Member Stephen Fessel. We have Amy Ramos representing Assembly Member Sharon Court Silva. And representing from Senator Umberg's office, Ty. Thank you for being here though. Um, all right, so 13 years ago, this project started. This project started uh, as, a, as a vision. The city of Anaheim had the site and Jamboree started uh, brainstorming about what we could build on this site. And now here we are today. Finnamore Place is another step in the city's long-term commitment to reclaim the entire Ponderosa Park neighborhood and to make sure that there's a full spectrum of housing opportunities here in the city of Anaheim. This is the final piece of development that unlocks the completion of this neighborhood. Next up today, we have the mayor of this fine city. She's a lifelong resident of Anaheim. She's raising her family here. She's a strong supporter of housing that can be affordable to community members living here in Anaheim. She is the first woman to serve as a mayor of Anaheim. She's very, she's a very tough woman. She, she is small but mighty. She is a former federal prosecutor and along with that I have heard she's an all-American rugby player. So who plays rugby? Well, that's incredible. All right, we've got two rugby players there. So I'd like you to please help me in welcoming Mayor Ashley Aiken to the stage. Thank you. I won this election by absolutely cleaning up the rugby player vote. Pretty sure I got 100% of it. Um, thank you so much, Laura, for that kind introduction. It is true that I was lucky enough to be born in Anaheim, raised in Anaheim, but I would do one small correction. I'm probably only lightly raising my children uh, in the city of Anaheim. They're lightly parented. 
Um, so I want to say good morning to everybody here and welcome to the beautiful city of Anaheim and Anaheim's newest affordable community. At the opening of Finnamore Place here today marks our 42nd affordable community in Anaheim. I am very proud to say we have more affordable communities than any other city in Orange County. Not that it's a competition. And I just want to highlight that obviously this is something that we do not get here overnight. And it certainly does not happen by accident. One, I'd like to highlight that Anaheim is one of only, as one of only four housing agencies in Orange County. And this is important because it means we have the bandwidth to work with the county, to work with our state and federal partners, and to work with developers to pool our resources and build more communities like Finnamore Place. And it also happens because we pride ourselves on being the city of kindness, which means we have made a commitment to our residents that you can work in Anaheim, you will be able to live in Anaheim in addition to playing in Anaheim. Each year our city provides almost $100 million in rent assistance to our residents that need it. And we support over 6,300 Anaheim households with nearly 4,000 affordable apartments across our great city. And we're very excited to announce we have more on the way. Last, I would like to highlight the planning and collaboration of our city staff that goes into communities like Finnamore. If you are a member of the Anaheim city staff, can you please raise your hand and jump around? I'd like to give you a round of applause. So here at the beautiful Finnamore place, you can tell that obviously no stone was left unturned. Every inch of this community is well thought out and it's maximized to its full potential. Look around. You're gonna see thoughtful features like public art, vibrant colors, and intentional community gathering spaces. The residents here not only are going to have a new place to call home, but an opportunity to thrive. Parents are not gonna go, have to go far for things like a common cold or to seek the peace of mind of getting medical care and the kids that are going to live and grow up here. This community is gonna show them what a home can and should look like, and let them know that that is absolutely what every kid in Anaheim deserves. Because of the structure provided and the services offered, Finnamore Place will undoubtedly help change the future and the trajectory of these kids' lives. And with this community, we have raised the bar again with our partners at Jamboree for future affordable housing projects in Anaheim. When we have great partners like Jamboree, when we partner with places like the Disneyland Resort and our on-site providers, we believe in our vision, they believe in our vision, and we know nothing can stop us. I can't wait in five years, 10 years, to see the great stories come out of this building for the families that live here and learn about how projects like Finnamore have changed their lives. Because I know that when they are living here, their futures are going to be bright. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor. That was a wonderful, wonderful speech and so heartfelt and truly, truly what is happening here at Finnamore. I do want to point out, I was remiss in missing Council Member Carlos Leon. Council Member Leon, he uh, was here with us last night at the elected officials event. We tried to get him to spend the night out on the deck, but he did run off of it. We're happy that he's back here today, bright and early. So next, um, I'm going to continue to focus on our City of Anaheim partners and talk a little bit about um, one of their new council members, council member Norma Campos Kurtz. So what sticks out for me for council member Kurtz is that this was one of the first visits she made was right here to Finnamore Place to take a look at this property. She truly understands what this community needs She's connected to the community, and I think right away on that tour, ask questions about how are we serving, gonna serve the residents here, 
as well as the broader community. So I'm gonna ask council member Norma Campos Kurtz to come on up and share a few words with us. Thank you very much and good morning everyone. As um, mentioned, I am the newest council member, but also today the proudest. You are in the district I represent, District 4, and welcome. I'm also very proud, very proud to say that I was on the Housing Commission when we first voted for Fenimore Place. I want to thank the staff, the, si the city staff that worked so hard to put this together. When I first saw the map, I saw a triangle and couldn't imagine, couldn't imagine how we could have more than four or five apartments here. Planning in our housing department promised that working with Jan Marie, this could be accomplished. I thank you very, very much. Um, District 4 is famous for its resort area, but growing fame is coming to this area, to the Ponderosa Corridor, with Fenimore Place as its anchor. To the residents, welcome to District 4. I'm here to serve you and want to make sure that this kind of service continues in District 4 and throughout Anaheim. Thank you so much to all of the partners. Thank you for bringing the services to a community that so deserves the services that you're offering. Everything from Head Start to the St. Jude Center to the Health Care Center. Again, thank you. Welcome to District 4. And I cannot tell you, I cannot begin to tell you how proud I am of all of you here and all of the residents who are making this their home. Thank you. I was listening so closely to those words that I forgot I had to come back up here. Um, so next, I'm pleased to ask the president of Disneyland Resort, Ken Potrock, to share a few words with us. Disney, the Disneyland Resort has been committed to affordable housing and housing for all for quite some time. This specific development, as well as um, a prior motel conversion that we did for permanent supportive housing, Buena Esperanza, took advantage of the commitment that Disney made to work with the Orange County Housing Trust, which is a combination of the Orange County Business Council, as well as NeighborWorks of Orange County, to invest funding in affordable housing. I would like to thank Helen O'Sullivan and Lucy Dunn, who put this together with the Orange County Housing Trust. Disneyland contributed millions of dollars to the trust with the hopes that other businesses would jump in and contribute. We're still working on that hope, but um, we were successful for this development to get a $1.5 million infusion of cash to make this development a reality. The collaboration between the Orange County Housing Trust and Disneyland Resort shows the power of local businesses who are working to transform their communities to ensure that the workforce here has a place to live, that they choose to stay in Anaheim and live in Anaheim and work in Anaheim. And as some of you know, I personally went through this with my middle son, had an offer out by Arizona State where he graduated, have an offer here at, with the city of Anaheim and luckily he chose the city of Anaheim and I got him back to California but it was it's a tough decision when you look at the housing costs for sure so with that um, we are very proud to be their partner I would say we're talking about values you've heard a bit about values there's true value alignment 
between Jamboree and what we've done here and the Disneyland Resort, from the high quality development that you see here to the inclusiveness that we work towards in a community and that is represented at the Disneyland Resort. You see it when you go to the resort, you can see that everyone in our community feels comfortable being there and being their true self. And that's extremely important for Jamboree and I know is reflected in Disneyland's values. So I'm excited, excited to ask the president of Disneyland Resort to come on up and share a few words. I don't know, I think she said some wonderful things. I probably should stop while I'm ahead. Um, thank you very much, uh, everyone. It's such a lovely turnout here, and I think the turnout is reflective of the heart of this community. Uh, and I think that heart is so incredibly important um, as we begin to think about how we can help and make really critical progress uh, in building housing here in Anaheim for those in our community that quite honestly need the help the most. And again, I think that's a very heartfelt kind of effort. One of the things that uh, I was lucky enough to do, I had just joined the Disneyland Resort uh, a number of years ago. And, and early on in my tenure, I had the opportunity to be at the uh, Buena Esperanza uh, opening, that apartment conversion that we were just talking about. And, and it's great to see now the second step uh, in, that, in that progress with this beautiful, beautiful facility. I am really thrilled about this facility. I'm particularly thrilled about this facility because it is very much designed to serve many different kinds of people and many different kinds of households, but in particular capable of serving families and families with children. And I think that's uh, uh, vital. Uh, uh, you heard earlier that the Disneyland Resort uh, committed $5 million to the Orange County Housing Trust in 2019. The money was designed to be what we call last mile money. It was designed to help us uh, push over the edge to get these kind of projects financed and to provide uh, both the Disney money and resources, but also the Disney name uh, uh, that really speaks to the quality that, that Jamboree and the city uh, have put into this. So we're really proud of that. I think it's uh, incredibly uh, important to think about this project. I, I made a comment to a number of people walking in today that it takes a village to build a village. And that's exactly what this is. This is a village that I think we can all be proud of with so many different groups participating. And that's how you get things done. So I'm, uh, again, thrilled with that. One of the things that, that um, I wanted to say in a, a public environment is that as the Disneyland Resort uh, prepares for our growth, by the way, we're gonna be 68 years young. Uh, next month. As we uh, uh, take our, our, our little resort, uh, only 68 years young, and look to the next decades, again, as we begin to look at not just the resort, but the community that surrounds us, we are uh, committed to continuing to be partners in these kinds of projects and are very, very optimistic that there are many more to come. Thank you all very much. Jamboree's second partnership with Disneyland Resort and their financing and we really are eager and excited to see what the future holds so thank you again. Next up we have the Vice President of U.S. Bank Corp Impact Finance, a new name to us, and uh, also a member of Jamboree's Advisory Board, um, Brian Roberts. So Brian is just um, a part of, he was a part of Union Bank and U.S. Bank now coming together. He's been on Jamboree's board for quite some time. He's helped us navigate the financing um, waves and trails as we work to get these developments done. We're extremely grateful for U.S. Bank as a long-term partner of ours. Since 1999, we have worked with them to finance more than two dozen affordable housing developments. 
They also do uh, support Jamboree with grants. They support us with a nice line of credit that keeps the wheels moving so we can keep these developments happening. And they also support our STEM learning program for women and children in our communities. So for Finnemore Place, uh, they purchased the tax credit equity, which was more than $24 million. They provided a $32 million construction loan, a $14 million permanent loan, and a $2.5 million second tranche of permanent financing. So with that, let me go ahead and ask Brian to come on up and share a few words. Hi everyone, good morning. It's great to be here with you today. Really excited. We've been looking forward to this event for quite some time. Um, U.S. Bank Impact Finance is pleased to be here today to celebrate Finnemore Place and to celebrate the families who will call it home and build healthier lives here. It will be a special place to the kids who learn and play in its community center, which is the largest of any Jamboree property so far. Uh, it'll hopefully serve as a refuge to the residents whose lives are made better by the services of St. Jude's Manchester Clinic, of the Child Guidance Center, and Orange County Head Start, all operating in this complex. You know, every affordable housing project that we work on is a labor of love. This project just so happened to take more labor than we thought it was going to when we started. Uh, we closed on the financing on Finnemore Place during the pandemic lockdown, March 2020, dark times. If you think about what was going on back then, Tom Hanks was testing positive, the NBA was canceling games, the stock market was crashing, and Jamboree was forging ahead on closing on this project to try to break ground. Um, the project rode every wave of labor shortages and cost spikes that the pandemic could throw at it. It was a huge challenge the whole way through, and I want to express my admiration to the Jamboree team for your tenacity and your savvy problem solving to get us where we are today, here admiring your beautiful handiwork. So here's to the Jamboree development team. You know, aside from the privilege of being involved with this project as the lender and the investor, I'm personally touched by Finnemore Place's namesake. Now, this project is dedicated to Marcy Finnemore, Jamboree's longtime CFO, who passed away in 2020. You're going to hear more about Marcy today, but I can think of no better honor for Marcy's legacy of service than this beautiful community that's going to give back for generations to come. So please join me in congratulating Jamboree Housing on Finnemore Place. It is great to partner with all of you and provide affordable housing and critical services to the residents of Anaheim. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brian, and, and thank you to U.S. Bancorp for, um, for all that you do for us, and thank you to all of our speakers today. I think it's really, truly your shared vision that made this development happen. Um, Finnemore Place is truly representative of what vision and mission alignment looks like. Jamboree's mission, and I'm just gonna take a minute to cover it, because it is different. You think, oh, we're an affordable housing developer. But our mission, the words really matter, and very intentional in their selection. Jamboree delivers, so delivers is an action word. Action, we deli we're delivering this. Jamboree delivers high quality, what does high quality mean? It means high quality development, high quality staff, high quality partners, high quality residents when we work with our residents and we bring them in here. Um, so we deliver high quality affordable housing and services that transform lives, transform lives and strengthen communities. So it's broader than just building housing. It's broader than just providing services to those on site. It ripples through that broader community. So just a bit about Jamboree. Mentioned earlier, I've been here 24 years. It's been an incredible amount of fun and excitement and stress and everything that goes with that. We have more than 100 affordable developments. I was gonna say like this one, but they're not all like this one. But we have more than 100 affordable housing communities in 50 cities throughout California, more than 10,000 homes, and over 20,000 Californians that live in our properties. 
This work is only possible, right, with this common goal to provide safe, affordable housing to those who need it. I'm gonna talk just briefly about our uh, partnership with Anaheim. So 30 plus years ago, 30 plus years ago, Jamboree was asked to partner on a home ownership project. I'm not sure that the city staff knows this, but we worked with, back then, a very small company called the Olson Company, and we developed some first-time home buyer condos on Vermont Street. And at that same time, what came together was I was actually working at the city of Anaheim, and I was the assistant planner um, in my teens, of course, doing the environmental work, doing the CEQA and the NEPA work in between trying to write and help a consultant write a housing element. So 30 plus years ago, Jamboree got some early start uh, there at the city of Anaheim as I also did. We now flash forward and we have eight affordable housing communities, more than 700 homes here in the city of Anaheim, uh, at kind of ranging at all income levels from helping those who are experiencing homelessness all the way up to about 80% of the area meeting income. So 10 years ago, Jamboree applied through a request for a proposal to the city, over 10 years ago to the city, and we came in second place. We did not get awarded this project. So years passed, it did not get built. It was kind of put on hold. And when the RFP came back out, um, the focus and attention was to do something special here, to do something more than housing. And we were prepared at that time to prepare a response. And our current um, executive management team who's here today worked on that response and we were selected. So a lot of things went on. The entitlements were being processed. Keep in mind the zoning code did not allow for this residential development to include the community services that it does here. So we worked with the city to get that through. Um, this concept here, the original kind of theme behind it was that for the residents and the surrounding community that this would be a beacon of hope. Hope was at its core. I believe hope is uh, the nourishment of the soul. And for the residents here, they're nourished by the hope they have for living here, whether you're a parent working full time in a job that does not allow you to even rent a market rate apartment. So thankfully they live here in affordable housing and they send their school, their kids to these wonderful schools. They can participate in the services here to make sure that there's a safety net should they need anything, should there be any concerns. And it all works together. So this beacon of hope with a strong city partner who's committed to innovation and there's a lot of trust built there, you can make something like this happen. As mentioned earlier, we have our largest uh, community center, larger than any of the other 100 developments that, plus, that we've done. So leveraging these partnerships will ensure that the social, economic, education, health and wellness needs of this neighborhood over the long term can be met. I want to thank our partners, of course, St. Jude Neighborhood Health Center, Orange County Head Start, and the Child Guidance Center for coming with us on this journey. This project had a lot of ups and downs uh, as it was being um, created and developed, and I'm happy for you all sticking with us. This type of work truly helps us then in achieving our vision. I talked about our mission, but Jamboree's vision is much bigger than what we can do. We can only do it through these partnerships. And our vision is that every person will live in a strong, healthy, sustainable, equitable, and just community. And housing is the foundation for building strong communities, and everything else springs from that. So we, again, we realize our vision through these partnerships. Um, part of Jamboree's commitment to being a good neighbor is to give intentional thought to the unique names. So going to the name of this property. Sometime we name a property for its location. We have a lot that are named for the street that it was on. And this was for quite some time Manchester Apartments. But we thought this development needed something more. 
So Finnemore Place is named as a lasting tribute to Marcy Finnemore, who served on Jamboree staff for 19 years. Mm -hmm. uh, rising through the ranks, uh, Marcy became an executive VP and CFO. And just a little bit, when I started at Jamboree, there were just a, um, less than a handful of us staff. And Marcy came on part-time because she wanted to be able to raise her daughter, Elizabeth, who's with us here today. And so I said, great, she was coming from a big market rate developer, had a lot of experience. I could pay her the same hourly rate, but because it was less hours and she already had benefits, it worked. Well, little did we know that 19 years later, we'd still be working together, growing this incredible company with the help of other staff and of course our board of directors. She was my colleague, a mentor, a friend, um, and we're just so pleased that we could name this property after her. I'd like to ask the chairman of our board, David Wood, to come on up and say a few words about our, the legacy and to introduce um, Marcy Finnamore to you all. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> yeah, good morning. My name is David Wood. I'm the current chair of uh, Jamboree Housing. Um, on behalf of the board, I just want to thank our city partners. As you've heard, it's our eighth project in the city of Anaheim, and we're really proud of it. Thank you to all our lending partners um, and all to the uh, service providers who collaborated with us on making this Finnemore Place a reality today. I want to share a story on both Marcy uh, Finnamore and our retired board member, Rich Marion. 22 years ago, all three of us worked at a group called Western National. Rich was buying apartments for offshore investors. Marcy was doing his accounting, uh, and I was building and developing uh, apartments. As it turns out, Marcy and I and Rich, we office next door to each other. And during a coffee chat one day, they said, hey, would you be interested in joining this small little nonprofit called Jamboree Housing? Uh, they would like some development experience. Um, it only required a monthly board meeting and I think a strategic plan also once a year. I said yes, I'd love to give back, uh, joining both Marcy and Rich. Wow, glad I said yes. As you fast forward 22 years, you know, Jamboree is now a preeminent, best in class, full service, affordable housing development company in the state of California, not just Orange County, which people thought. Thank you. Under Rich and Marcy's leadership, Rich had decades of experience with Union Bank and City National, along with his acquisition and disposition work at Western. He had a keen understanding about market cycles and lending practices, which need to be weathered. Affordable housing is not immune to these cycles. Rich made sure Jamboree only did the good deals and not every deal. And that we had a conservative financial platform, transparent with our partners, transparency was important, and that we would be around in perpetuity as an industry leader. Rich made sure that all of us at Jamboree made sure that when we are gone, when we're no longer on the board, Jamboree would be here forever. So that was kind of our mission statement internally. Rich, thank you. Your DNA runs throughout Jamboree today. And we'd like to present to you, on behalf of the Board of Directors, the Chairman Emeritus, the first for Jamboree for your 24 years of service. Please join me in welcoming Rich back. I think Rich is gonna give us a little more uh, background on Marcy and how we all got together. Thank you, David. Um, I want to apologize for my uh, attire today. Um, Delta Airlines couldn't get me home in time to uh, change my clothes and fly down here to Orange County, but they did get me to Orange County, so to Delta, thank you very much. Um, I'm truly honored to, to return here today uh, to speak to you all, an event that pays tribute to a dear friend and colleague by naming this community in her honor. 
In preparing my remarks, I went back to the Jamboree website where there's a tribute to Marcy, and I'd encourage all of you, if you want to learn more about her, to, to go there and read that, because I didn't want to repeat myself, and I wanted to try and give you all a greater insight into Marcy's impact on Jamboree, on the communities where we operate, and on the residents that we serve. What constantly impressed me about Marcy was her commitment to the mission. Laura gave you a detail on the, the mission. I just want to summarize three little elements of that is her dedication to building strong communities, to providing quality housing and services to our residents, and most importantly, to enabling the transformation of our residents' lives. Each one of those is a lofty ambition that any one of us would be happy if we could just achieve one. Not Marcy. Marcy wanted to achieve them all. Any challenge was met, any obstacle was addressed, was confronted and overcome, including cancer, um, whether it was in her professional or in her personal life. Marcy at Jamboree was a critical element in transferring this organization from a local Irvine nonprofit with limited resources to a statewide organization that communities seek out, that banks and investors want to lend money to, and where our residents have the opportunity to achieve their goals and their aspirations. Her personal life was devoted to her faith, her family, and her community. And what I was able to see is Marcy was just as successful in her personal life as she was in her professional life. If somebody was to ask me my definition of a life well led, I would point to Marcy Fenimore as the prime example. And I'd like to just leave you with one quick thought. The reason we are honoring this community with naming it her honor is so that it will remind all of us every time we think about this property that this is what it means to live a life well led. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Um, appreciate those comments, and um, I knew there was no way I was going to be able to get through much more on it, so I appreciate you doing it. Um, some of you don't know, when I first started at Jamboree, I kept a checkbook in the right-hand drawer. I uh, had a consultant that would do our financials, just making copies of our checks, and so in order for us to grow, I and we all needed uh, Marcy terribly, and so I want to thank you. You brought her name up to me as somebody that could come in and help us with the growth, and I really thank you for that. Um, Next up is my favorite part of any of these ceremonies. This is the part where we truly hand off this development from all of us who've worked to put it together, the development team, the asset management, property management who's leased it off, and we just hand this over specifically to the residents. And so today we actually have one of our residents who's willing to come on up here and share a little bit about what this property means to him. Um, I'd like to uh, ask Alexis to come on up to the stage and I hope you can all wel help me in welcoming him on up to share his story.
Good morning, everybody. There's a lot more people than I saw. <laughs> My name is Alexis Teodoro, and I'm a Latinx single father of a beautiful baby boy named Theo, which I currently co-parent. We are happy to call the city of Anaheim and the Fenimar Place Apartments our home. I come from a mixed status immigrant family. Like many working class immigrant families in Orange County, we lived in overcrowded housing up until I left high school. Growing up, I realized the link between wages and housing as I saw my parents struggle to make ends meet, but especially to pay the rent. As an adult and parent now, I have also faced similar circumstances as my parents when it comes to housing and rent. Last year, my son and I were evicted for paying rent late here in the city of Anaheim. The strenuous eviction process was extremely overwhelming and I had to defend myself as tenant organizations couldn't help me because they already had too many cases in their docket. I remember reading a self-help guide published by a statewide organization and that is how I navigated this process by myself. At the end, in order to negotiate with my former landlord not to put my eviction on my record, I agreed for them to keep my deposit. I really needed that deposit to find a new home and for food. It also didn't help that at that time I had become unemployed because my previous job was impacted by the pandemic. I'm thankful for California safety net, social safety net programs that allow me and my son to have healthcare coverage when we lost it and to also have money for groceries. I lived in my car for many months last year to pay back bills and debt I incurred due to the eviction and the pandemic. I still remember the wiping of tears when I decided to apply to Anaheim Affordable Housing Program. The online process was easy for a millennial like me, and I didn't think too much of it at first. Affordable housing to me and for families like the one I grew up with, don't ever think affordable housing is for us. But I took a leap of faith and hoped that the, that the universe was listening. Truth be told, I got an email from the city telling me to reach out to an affordable housing provider that the city referred me to. When I applied and got approved to live here at the Fenover Place Apartments, I cried for days, up to a whole month I remember. I was in shock so much that my anxiety levels increased because I didn't think it was real. However, I moved along the pipeline and the day finally came to move into the building. The day I moved in, Feel very fresh in my memory. I was able to sleep and actually stretch. Living in a car, <laughs> impacts your mental health and your physical health negatively. When it finally kicked in, I apologize. I swear I practiced it last night. It's not supposed to happen. When it finally kicked in that my son and I were going to live in an affordable apartment, That night, I slept here, I slept peacefully. Being a resident at Fitmore Place has changed my life in ways that words may not be enough to describe the feeling. Going from being houseless to a proper home, the shift was tremendous. For example, when I was evicted, I took time off from my graduate studies. However, 
now that my son and I live in an affordable housing apartment, it has allowed me to re-enroll in my graduate program. I am a student at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, where I'm getting my Master's of Science in an online labor studies program. Now I truly smile when I see my son run around here. I've never seen that playground like that that big. I smile and I'm very humbled by the other families I've been able to meet that are my neighbors. We talk about how nice the building is, the restoration of our health, and I can't wait to sign my son. I can't wait to sign up my son, Theo, for the Head Start program. That's going to start soon here. However, there is still something that keeps me up at night when I kiss my son goodnight. I can't forget the homeless people I met when I lived in my car last year. I can't forget the homeless folks I met in the soup kitchen lines in Costa Mesa, Ana, in Santa Ana. That is why I want to dedicate my time, my life, to make sure everybody has a word of I want to thank you for listening to my story, for sharing space with me here and my son in our new home. I'm thankful for the staff on the first floor, for always being professional and courteous. Eric Torres, Eileen, Valenzuela, Bea Ayala, and Michelle Mosqueda. Thank you for what you do. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't feel as safe as we do. The Fender for Place Apartments is a model to replicate in the state of California, and I will be there to help and support the Jamboree Housing Corporation in any advocacy efforts to make this vision a reality. Thank you as well to the city of Anaheim and the mayor and the council members that are here present, to the funders like Disneyland and US Bank for also donating your money so that Jamboree can take the gloss off and as you heard, deliver in building projects that transform people's lives. I now have the ability to live and thrive with my son. Thank you to all you beautiful people. I hope you have a great rest of your day and thank you for being here. has returned to his master's program. Um, it's very, very exciting. Um, Alexis, I, I understand that um, with your program, you have a cohort meeting back at Amherst. Uh, Alexis is in need of $1,000 to make that trip and the Jamboree employees all got together and raised that money for you. So you're going, you're going back. We know that this uh, this program's getting a little long. I've got a little bit more to run through. I just want to um, recognize some folks that contributed to make this development happen. Of course, City Manager Jim Vanderpool, thank you and your leadership, Grace and Andy, Grace Stepter and Andy Nagel for all of your work on this development, your vision <laughs> side by side with us, the whole entire City of Anaheim staff. Um, as well as uh, the folks over at HUD, they are always left out of my mind because their HUD money typically passes through the city. But we do have uh, Deputy Press Secretary Demarcus Fennell with us today. Thank you to HUD for that hard work of getting those funds and making sure their cities are doing what they should be doing. Anaheim is a great city for HUD to be investing in. Of course, U.S. Bancorp, uh, Impact Finance, Orange County Housing Trust Neighbor Works, both Helen and Lucy, uh, for your support on this project, the Disneyland Resort, and our future service partners who we covered here. I do want to uh, thank, take the time to thank my board of directors and advisory board members. Many of you are here. This has been a tough one to weather through. Uh, Jamboree has taken a lot of risk on this, a lot of financial risk, and um, I thank you for coming along with us on this. Um, those that have worked tires, tirelessly to get this project complete, our development team under the leadership of Michael Massey and all of his, uh, his folks that got this development done. 
Um, it's the work of affordable housing development. It's not just about the building, you know that. It's about transforming lives and strengthening communities. Uh, I want to thank the entire Jamboree team for your commitment to what we do and commitment on this project. I think Alexis really wrapped it up for all of us on why we do this work. Uh, we're proud to be a part of this development in this city. Um, in closing, I just say for those of you that have circles on your name tags, I know they're going to want to take your picture, so stick around. We'll do some photos here. We do have tours of Finnemore Place beginning shortly. Uh, they're going to start at the check-in table, so go ahead on over there if you'd like to get a tour. There's a lot of community space to see, so definitely if you have the time, take the tour. And thank you again, everyone, for being here with us and to the marketing team, Marissa, and the whole team for putting this event together today. Thank you.